Ladies and gentlemen, this is Andy Morales, and thank you for tuning in to the Jam Sessions Live podcast, episode number four. Uh, today, we have a guest, and this is no other than Living Canvas 84, Leon Jones. How are you, brother? I'm doing very well, and um, I'm glad to be on. Awesome, awesome. So how you doing? How you been, man? What's going on in this life? Oh, man. Um, I feel... I mean, I guess I feel like I can speak for a lot of people where um, after 2020 and coming into the third month of 2021, still trying to get my head together um, mentally, spiritually, physically, just in all aspects of my being and um, trying to make the best of this year and to the best of my ability, make it a better one than it was in 2020 when everything was so stagnant and everything was just locked down and it just felt like a emotional roller coaster for um not just me but like so many other people like those i know and those i don't know so um yeah <laughs> no, no, i hear you on that and it, it, it's crazy because um last year was definitely such a I don't know, man. I'll say this. I saw, I guess we can say we saw a lot of true colors last year, you know, not just with other people. But I know for me personally, I know I remember talking about this on the episode I had with Robert Kazi, where we was talking about how, I, or at least I was talking about how I saw a lot of my true colors that even things that I didn't even think or nor that I even know was in me kind of thing. And um, you said something about spirituality, which is true, because I think spiritually, for our souls, you know, it's good if we want to change to be better versions of ourselves, if that makes sense. And it's interesting because I know I saw, I, I like, I always knew I had a bad temper, but I didn't think that temper was a lot worse than what I thought. And I think last year really taught me that about myself, that it's about time to, okay, like if I really want to make this work or make this relationship work with the Lord or with my wife and really, you know, if I want my son to see me as somebody that, okay, hey, this is an influence in my life, you know, my father's just not just some sperm donor type thing, then I have to do whatever it takes to influence him the right way, you know, do I, am I always going to get it right? No, but, you know, I think 2020 really taught me that, and a lot of other stuff too, but I, I, I've learned a lot about myself, you know, and I think we could all agree, you know, that this has happened to us as well, um, Mental health, though, was definitely something that was very, very high last year, right? What do you think? Yeah, um, I definitely, I mean, I would say with everything going on, um, 2020 was very traumatic. And those already with underlying mental um, health issues and um, disabilities and what have you, it just exasperated everything and just made everything... Um, much worse and those who had addictions whether it was alcoholism whether it was um, addictions to medicine or just whatever the addiction was I also feel it made it worse because it was it was a dark space you know it was a really dark space and going on to spirituality for me I also will say that really showed me myself um spirituality it really showed me that there's a whole lot of things that um jesus has to work out of me and i really saw my stubbornness and my relationship with him wasn't as close as i would say you know it is and you know i really went through a lot of faith testing last year um, where I was just questioning a lot of things um, in, in my life. I was questioning, you know, my spirituality even. I went through bouts of depression um, even. I dealt with a lot of loss. Um, loss of um, loss of um, church um, church friends um, from death, um, loss of friends, um, um, family members um, passed away. 
And um, even like I had a, a roommate I was living with and he passed away too. And I, oh yeah, then um, back in April, the job I was working at for five years, I had lost that. And so I became real complacent um, and didn't start working again until October um, of last year. And, well, yeah, obviously last year. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, you know, with all of that, and then, you know, with the fear of, you know, coronavirus and it being so amped up by the media and um, you always seeing or hearing about like cases and, you know, it was just traumatizing. It was all traumatizing. And then the whole lockdown where you couldn't really go out to where you wanted to, like you couldn't really go out to the movies, you couldn't go out to eat, you were just scared of like, it just put you, it just gave you anxiety. And so getting back to work, actually, I I was nervous. I was like, I wanted to, a part of me wanted to go back to work. Another part of me was like, oh, no, no, I don't really. No, and I, I hear you on that because I remember when I was laid off um, back in March of last year. It's funny, too. Um, in two weeks, I think it was the 17th is when it was official. Okay, they officially made the the the. the I think it was the shutdown. New York was like the 20th or the 19th of that week, which was the 17th is when I was told, okay, you need to go home. And it's funny because they was it four months. I was actually home for four months. And basically, um, you said something that was very interesting. And um, I was going to say um, depression was definitely something that was, for me personally, that was very, a really back, uh, a big, big thing for me because I know depression for me, you know, I dealt with a lot of it behind closed doors that I never really talked to my wife about until later on, once everything was calmed down, I guess, kind of thing, because, you know, I, I'm not afraid to talk about this. Um, you said spiritually, yeah, I think a lot of us who walk in the things of God really had to go through a lot of face faith testing and that that was very interesting you said that because I know me personally I definitely went through a lot of faith testing and I think this is back to what I was saying before how I saw a lot of my true colors mm. but the problem was something I struggled with a lot you know and I've struggled with that my entire life it's just I've dealt with it in different levels where I'm able to handle it differently now than what I used to mm -hmm. but you said also about alcoholism that was definitely a crazy thing because I did see a lot of people drunk or or just messed up kind of thing and I remember times in my life before I came to the Lord where I was just beyond messed up. Like I would be like in a park bench somewhere or homeless people took my money and then I didn't even know what happened the day before. Or I, you know, I would sleep on the train because I just didn't have the willpower to get off on my stop to just, sure. you know, take this just to, just to go home kind of thing, you know? And it was just crazy how um, this, like this past year was definitely in so many ways, you know, speaking of this year, I wanted to ask you a question because it reminded me of it. And I know we spoke, we spoke about it before. I'm going to bring it up. And I wanted to talk about your rant or your video that you talked about the Black Lives Matter. Now, before I talk about the video, I wanted to talk about what, like when this whole thing was happening with the George Floyd thing, and then it's, it, it, I guess you could say this was the re, I don't know if it's a re introduction of Black Lives Matter, because it seemed like that was always there for a while, but they weren't as loud until George Floyd passed away because of what happened to him. So, my question to you is, what was your mind at? when you saw that like well, well how did that like I, I mean obviously it hurt you but how did it hurt you in that way well um i mean i would say the start of 2020 um there was i think first you heard the case of ahmaud arbery um you know going the whole case the whole thing about him going for a jog and then getting shot down and then you had the case of Breonna Taylor um, happen. It's like, oh, God, not again. And then there was a few other cases. Um, 
and so there was already, and I was already like, uh, I don't want to say the word triggered, <laughs> you know. Uh, no, but I, I... It, it's such a cliche thing to say. He's like, I was triggered. Um, but yeah, uh, it definitely was something that happened. And um, then I would say there was other cases that happened, but you know, they weren't as big, you just heard about them. And then I was saying that I was already writing poetry um, pertaining to that. I believe, yeah, one of my poems I had written, and this was, I think, after Ahmaud Aubrey passed. It was called Red Rivers. And I either wrote it in between or right after Breonna Taylor. But anyway, uh, when I wrote it, um, I had made this whole piece, um, like, you know, how many more, um, you know, of our brother's going to die. And um, it's 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 real powerful piece. And at the end of it, um, I put the names of every single victim to police brutality and gun violence. But I also wanted to add in um, just black-on-black crime as well. Uh, because, unfortunately, like, it happens. We pretty much destroy ourselves, I would say, even more than the news and media make about police brutality. And, and sadly, that's just, like, the fact. So... I wanted to make it about that too. Like we also need to come together um, and stop, you know, killing each other because that that doesn't help the problem at all. And when George Floyd happened, oh man, that just sent me over the edge. And I remember hearing about it, but then when you actually see the footage and you actually sit there and watch it, I was done. I was like, I this is too much. And oh, I was going to say, and then um, I had written my poem, which is one of my favorite poems, um, called "Do You See Me." But do you want to? I was gonna say, if you want, you could read it. You could read those poems if you want. Uh, yeah, actually, yes, I would like to um, do that. Actually. All right, so the first one, because I do want to read it chronologically. Red Rivers, okay. Red Rivers, um, as I said, was the one I had written. And um, I want to say, yeah, I wrote it in February, but we'll see since it's on my um, Instagram page. So here it is. Is Black Lives Matter merely a nice hashtag to put on a sign or social media platter to have some sentiment to raise awareness that will bring knowledge and capture a movement a moment yet careless killings will happen on the ladder see we can become mad as hell or the inspirational banners with the sad truth in knowing these cases will carry ongoing chapters almost makes you numb to know these similar scenarios will happen after after these words are pinned down, spoken about, and given the commentary chatter. Bam! Another brother or sister whose blood has been splattered. <laughs> I guess more p- police racially profiled the bad drug dealing strapper who was unarmed, shot, and killed. It's just another statistical factor. <laughs> another brother or sister, they s- said they had a hammer. More family shattered, but oh well, what matters? We're three-fourths of a human in some eyes that need to go back to Africa. Be in jail or obey our modern-day masters. And we better not act intelligent just because we received the masters. (laughs) And to some still looked at as slaves, ignorant, walking cadavers. So do we scream in rage, act out, and be savage? Or break down with shrugged shoulders and crazy laughter? We tried any means in nonviolence. Both met their assassins. As the statistics run, they increase with more divide and disaster. 
as Moa passed some run to hear God's word from the pastor. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord, forgive me, Jesus, but some wish judgment would just come faster. So as I pen these lyrics, anguish builds in my spirit. I don't mean to be negative, it's just what the truth is. How for killing black skin can be suspicious? <laughs> and it's judicious. If we get killed like it's just proper business. But you see, sadly, some only see us as killers, thieves, and drug dealers, and uncivil. So you see it's civil to cut us down like scissors. And what's worse, we kill our own culture, then pour out distillers. So is there really a resolution? Or will we all just keep crying these red rivers? Wow. Wow. Wow, man. That, wow. And this was the first poem that you said that was between um, the one, wait, what was the name of the other person? And then you said before um, Breonna Taylor, there was another person you said, yeah, right? Yeah, this was... Um, during the time of Ahmaud Aubrey, because I wrote this February 12th, 2020. And I know okay. that time is when I believe I saw the news about Ahmaud Aubrey being shot down. And then I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it was Brianna Taylor who happened next. And then there was of course, George Floyd. But the other wait, so I, I'm wait, so George Floyd happened before Breonna Taylor. I thought, I, I mean, George I thought I'm sorry, happened. it happened at yeah. George Floyd happened after Breonna Taylor. Oh, why did I think it was before? Okay, I just learned something. I thought it was before um, no, yeah, Breonna because, Taylor, and then it was her. Yeah, Breonna Taylor happened um, before George Floyd. And after Brianna Taylor died, then it was George Floyd. It's it's interesting though because it's like it, it hurts me because I mean look I'm I'm Puerto Rican born in New York but technically a lot of people don't I don't know if people want to admit this but technically Puerto Ricans are black even though I'm not a black skinned person but I'm still part black due to my you know my background. And, you know, people don't want to talk about that. I'm sorry, people don't want to talk about that. But it's just, you know, I guess there's between, let's say, someone like you and someone like me is I'm afraid I'm going to get stopped and get a ticket for something really stupid because I'm just a minority type thing. Mm -hmm. You know, let's say someone like you, you know, hate to say it like that. It's like you're afraid that you're going to get stopped by the police and you're going to get murdered. And it just sucks because it's like damn, like no person of any race, any color, or any foundation should have to go through something like that. And it just kills me. Because even in the 80s, let's be honest, you know, it was just as bad. But it, it seems a lot worse now because, you know, there's technology and it's more exposed. But what, what gets me is you mean to tell me people from past generations still have not learned from their past. And it's like we're still doing this to each other, you know, and it's like, and it seems like it's more, I mean, I'm not saying that, um, how do I say this without sounding weird? Um, you know, like obviously Hispanics go through the stuff too and Asians go through the stuff too, but it just seems like your people seem to get it the worst of the worst. And it's just, I just don't understand why that is. Like, it just kills me, you know? It's like, these are, and, and, and you know, let's say if I, I didn't know who George Floyd was and you didn't know who he was, but you, you know, we, you had that relation, like, oh my God, like that quote unquote could have been me. Right. But then it's like, that could have been my friend. That could have been a relative. That could have been someone that I considered a brother. And who wants to see that? And like his own parents, you know, his mom seeing that on the well, news, like that killed. I was going to say the story about his mother. His mother actually was. If I, if I um, remember correctly, she actually was um, she actually was dead, um, but he was still crying out for her, saying "Mama," if I'm correct. Okay, I mean, because I, I I still don't understand that whole situation. I'll be honest with you, but it's just people closest to him, and it's like the cop just it, it just it just kills me. You know what I'm saying? It, it just sometimes makes me angry because. 
got you know quote unquote that that could have been one of us and it just kills me you know like no one has shouldn't have to go through you know basically go down like that right. and now that leads me to my next question and it's about uh a video that you did um about the black lives matter and i know you did i don't know if it was a, it, i think i believe it was a rant yes. that talked about that but i wanted to ask you not just what inspired that but what did something happen that made you do that video or was it just something that you just felt like you know i i just have to, this has to be said yeah or this set you off like did something set you off to do that and this is why you thought in your heart to do that like that like what tell, tell me the story behind that video yeah it was something that happened spontaneously really um i just had so much emotion in me um it was just this volcanic buildup that exploded um, after, you know, watching the news or just reading articles and um, just on and on being inundated with the George Floyd incident, Breonna Taylor, Mark Aubrey, and just me thinking back on not just them, but all the other cases. Um, and then I had believe that yeah i just watched the documentary um on another woman i'm trying to remember what her name name was but she was found hung in a jail and they said she committed suicide and the story about it was very strange because she had just moved into the town and was getting a new job and promotion and she was very she was definitely an advocate and a lot of people who knew her said, like, this is not something she would do. So it was um, Sandra Bland. Now I remember Sandra Bland was her name. And it was very weird that that would happen. And I just watched a documentary on it. So just watching that and then I sort of watching a documentary on Black Wall Street, which I already knew about. 10 years prior, like 2009, 2010. And it was me just watching all of that and everything that was going on. And then it just exploded. And yeah, there are a lot of negative things that can be said about the Black Lives Matter movement that I do not agree with. So in saying that, I agree with the message but not all of the politics behind it. Um, yeah. Ah, okay. And that leads up to the other poem I had written. Um, and I wrote, wrote this June 5th, and it's called Do You See Me? All right. Do you see me? Beyond my skin? Beyond the indoctrinated mind control the society as you conditioned? Do you see me? Holding out my hands, hoping to listen. Because maybe this side of them you won't see as so suspicious. Do you see me? Hoping I don't become another, another statistic to the system that still enslaves and treats us like chattel in jail or prison. Do you see me? Because this world seems it has some blood revision. You see it's 2020, yet I still feel whips of papal disposition. Do you see me? Upset I have to repeat this message in repetition. Hands up, don't shoot. Praying I don't become another victim. Do you see me? Beyond the muddled biases and my heart that felt riotous is due to I can't live in peace and quietness. Do you see me? Centuries of boiled over pain where the blood of my ancestors cry out from injustices that still remain. Do you see me? Maybe I need to scream this out. We tried begging, pleading, serving, pleasing. Now we're going to shout. So do you see me? Now I don't give a damn. I still believe in nonviolence, but you won't hear me, man. Do you see me? My soul screams in passion because maybe we'll have to take this for change to even happen. Do you see me? Matter of fact, do you even see you? Look at the problem that we're in. Change can only start with you. Do you see me? Wow. That, that's very powerful right there, my friend. 
that, that that's very very powerful piece. Do you see me? Do so like, you see me? Is plainly wanting to be seen from my heart, wanting to be seen from my soul, wanting to be seen um, beyond just the color of my skin. And I know that's, of course, the culture we live in and how we've been portrayed through media, media and all these different stereotypes in a way that society has all these different, you know, this is like this, and this is like this, and this is like this. It, you know, it cubicles everybody and compartmentalizes everybody into certain sections and sex and other things I think are nonsense. So do you see me as basically like, you know, can we just see each other as just, you know, souls, hearts, just people and stop this like race war and this race baiting and do you see me actually is based on you know true events that happened um i remember my first job i worked at taco bell i was thinking that i wasn't that long at all but there was this customer who had came in and he was standing in line and the way he was looking at me was very like I get he he just looked like I don't know whether he was having a bad day or maybe it was because um you know he was racist. I don't know. Either way I just felt uneasy and so my line was you know, my line he easily could have came into my line because my line was open. And so he had waited till somebody else had came to the register and you know I got offended and everything and then inside my mind I said oh don't worry sir this side's white you know wanting to flip my hands <laughs> I didn't say that out loud <laughs> you know I, but you know wanting to just show him like uh, my white palms <laughs> so, <laughs> like, black hands, wow. but I didn't, I didn't then um <laughs> <laughs> say that out loud though I wanted to though but I didn't and then um, there were just other times where uh, I was in situations where I did get stopped by um, the cops and I saw the hypocrisy where they would they questioned me and like my other like friend who was black but then they let you know, like my wife and go. And yes, there's good cops and there's bad cops. Cause I had, I've had plenty of good cops in my life who looked after me, who, look, who looked out for me, who made sure that, you know, as a kid and even when I got older, that like everything was cool. So I'm not one of those, oh, I hate all cops, all cops are bad. Oh, you know. And but I'm also not a fool <laughs> at the same time. So right. I can see both sides of the coin. I know there's some people only want to see it's either like either or. And it's not always like that. You know, it is not always that black and white per se. It really isn't. No, and I it's interesting you said that because I was gonna ask you something else, um, and but then something else came to mind. It's interesting because um now if I can bring it into a a godly aspect of this, and I know you'll definitely understand this when I say this, like how much of that we see in the things of God, right? Because God is not black and white, he's just absolute, right? But people within the church who, you know, and I, I can say from one man of God to another that um, how many times have we seen that in the church where this, it, even though we're supposed to be all in one, one mind, one accord, but how many times have we seen that in the church where, you know, it's really more division than it is. And I feel like the reason why it hurts more is because it's like, you know, we're, you know, when we come to the things of God, our hearts are a little more sensitive and it, and it hurts more and it bothers us more. But why, why do you believe that happens in church? Do you think what 
the black community go through, right? Now, if I bring it into the church aspect, do you, why do you think that is in that aspect as well? I feel because, you know, our minds are still being transformed. You know, one of my favorite scriptures I like is in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, where um, it says, be not conformed, be no longer conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And you know, even though we're supposed to not be of this world, um, be in this world, but not of the world, our minds are still being renewed, our spirits are still being transformed and sanctified, you know, and so a lot of those things that we're supposed to leave out in the world, uh, unfortunately, we drag into the church with us. And, you know, just like the word church, the word church, uh, I believe the Greek word for is ecclesia, which means called out ones. And so we called okay. out of that type of mindset, that type of space, and just be new creations, you know, be new people. But unfortunately, uh, a lot of us are still being led by um, the things of the world and the things of our flesh. And because of that, we can still get caught up in those old divisions and those old schisms and what have you. Like, even though in the scriptures itself, it says, you know, there is no Jew, no Greek, there is no slave or free, there is no male or female, but we are all one in the body of Christ and Christ being the head. Like, we are all supposed to be one. We're all supposed to be one, united, together, knit together in him. But, you know, because, once again, we're still in the flesh. We still have our pride. We're still leaning on our own understanding. This is why we have division still. This is why there's so many different denominations where even in the scriptures, there was you know, the fight about who to follow. I, I believe um, it was Paul who had said, you know, some say they follow um, Peter, some say they follow Paul, some say they follow um, Apollos, some say they follow Christ. And that's what we're doing with all these different denominations. We, <laughs> we're like, oh, well, go to the Baptist church. Oh, well, I go to uh, the Pentecostal church. Oh, well, I go to Seventh-day Adventist church. Oh, well, I go to the Sacred Name church, or I go to the Catholic, the Mormon church. Oh, well, I'm Jehovah's Witness, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. You know, we can, we can go all down the line. And it is just, it's, it's really sad. Like, after 2,000 years um, of the Bible and we're still in there. But at the same time, this was all prophesied. This was all prophesied to happen. So when these divisions happen, when all of this violence happens, with everything going on in the world right now, <clears throat> all it is doing is just proving prophecy that the Bible already said was going to happen. So at the same time, even though it's shocking, um, if you are a Christian, it shouldn't be surprising because of what's already said. But I think it's still surprising because you're like, wow, I can't believe people, you know, it still blows your mind still, even knowing the fact. No, so it's true, though, because it's, it's interesting, though, because everything that God said was going to happen is coming to it's coming to life. And now I wanted to bring up something because. We were talking about the the you know the division. We were talking about the people following people it was Apollo, so Paul. Yeah. So it's interesting you say what you said because as you're saying this, I was thinking about the recent events that's been going on. That a lot because you're talking about how, um, you know, oh, I follow this, I follow that, I follow Paul, I follow Apollos, I follow such and such, right? 
But how many people now we can say, like in the thing in the body of Christ, are following man and not fully following God, uh, and and then yet later on, and it's interesting because last year and this year alone, God has been exposing so many things to prove this point, right? Carl Lentz and now Ravi Zacharias and other pastors. Um, I think Jared Wilson was another pastor who committed suicide. You know, but it just comes to show like uh, people are shocked when these things happen because the problem is people forget that just like us, these pastors are not or these leaders are not perfect. Exactly. Like, and I'll tell you this, Rabbi Zacharias, he was a top tier preacher, um, apologist, evangelist that I would like listen to um, regularly. I don't, I didn't listen to him as much in these couple of years, but I would always listen to him when he would come on the radio. I'd always watch his YouTube videos and I learned so much from that man. And even with the scandal, which I think is a little kind of bad taste, I mean, yeah, you know, they say what you do in darkness comes to light. But I'm like, wait, so you guys wait until after the man dies of cancer to bring up his bad stuff. Right. It just... All these years, all the years he was in ministry, all the years he was in ministry. Like, why now? Of all not, time, not, why now? Not a peep, not one word. And he was in ministry for years. years. You had all the time in the world. And then you I think he's it. just as old as Billy Graham, right? Like, almost go back that long, right? I'm not going to... He's not quite as old, but he definitely was up there when he died. Um, he was definitely up there. So you wait till the man dies of cancer, and then you guys wait like a month or, or more, and then all of a sudden, oh, did you know Zacharias did this and did that? And I'm not saying the man was right, but I'm like, you wait to... It was just... Why? Yeah. But it's crazy. But see, but now we asking God um, why, but now it goes back to the question that we're kind of answering our own question now because we're asking why. God told us why in his word. It, it's going to happen. Like, people, you know, be, what's that? When, um, I'm not saying that he was a false prophet, but I'm just saying this is an example of what that is you basically saying we can't trust everything we see can't trust everything we listen to and it sucks because it's like with people like him and Carl Lentz and everything like that they were so right. convincing and it's like right. people who were somewhat changed for their lives changed because of them you know because my whole thing is if you don't truly know God you really truly know don't know Jesus on your just because you know we can um how do I explain it like we can know God through fellowship but do we know God one on one in the relationship right. it's just me and him do we and, and, know him like because not everybody not because there's so many versions of Jesus out there that we don't a lot of people don't know what Jesus they're following and it's unfortunate that you rely on the messenger and not the message the Bible is the message. And Jesus is the is is the person that demonstrated how the Bible is supposed to look like, how he he demonstrated all that stuff. And it's so crazy to me how you know, <laughs> and, and it's just so crazy to me. Like we, and, and I'm I'm guilty. I'll be guilty of that too, without me realizing it. Like I relied more on the person, the pastor, like John Gray, another pastor who's a powerful man of God, but you know. But the difference between him and everybody else, I'll say this, and he said this in preachings where he says, this is how you know you can trust me because I'll expose me, but I'll never expose you. And I think that's what made me feel like, okay, even though, because he's had scandals too, but he talked about those things. He didn't, he didn't get quiet. He didn't deny them. He said, okay, fine, yeah, they happen. Or if something was misunderstood or misconstrued, he always corrected it. But how many preachers or or leaders we say today can actually say that. You know what I'm saying? But regardless of that, we're all flawed. And we, folk, we, we, we rely more on men than we do on God. And here's a perfect example of that, not taking a biblical scripture 
um, standpoint, King Saul was a perfect example of that because he was a man of God because he was influenced by Samuel. But then what happened, his 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 other fleshy side, like you said, got to him. So when people started, you know, because, OK, we wait till God says such and such. And then he said, don't kill the lamb until God says so. And he couldn't wait any longer. Why? Because he was noticing people were starting to walk away from him. And then right. Samuel and, and, and Saul got into this whole argument thing. And then he said, okay, um, God had detached his kingdom away from you. But the, with that being said is, is his, the fact that he was more focused on his image, how people were going to look at him and how people were going to be a certain way towards him that he did the exact opposite of what God told him to do. But how many pastors do the same thing too? Oh my God, if I, if I talk about this, yeah, ooh, not people don't look at me that's... funny. Oh my God, I can't talk about that. But then there's people who don't care and they'll talk about it anyway. But, right. but man, we're still focused on man and not God first. Right. I was going to say, and at the same time though, even though his, even though God had took away the anointing that he had, when he had got jealous when David was rising up as a king, you know, he still did not want David to lay a hand on, on like Saul, um, when he was in the, when he was in the cave. He still like and Dave David still respected that man, even when people are like, oh, you know, you can you kill Saul. David still respected him as a man of God, even even in his fallen state. Which that goes. I hope I'm not misquoting scripture when I say this that like. The gifts of God are not oh, without repentance, where like you can lose your anointing, but you can't lose your gift. Right. No, no, I, I get what you're saying. I get you. I, I, and it's just crazy, though. Like, it's crazy. See, like, that, that, that's a perfect example of that because time and time again, we all short, fall short of the glory of God. And yeah. God knows this is going to happen. I mean, but the good news about that is that. Despite all that, because we've accepted the Lord, Jesus Christ, the Lord, the Savior, there's no way for us to say, you know, we won't lose our salvation, basically. And there's so many things to back that up. But 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 the point I'm trying to make is it just we, we beat ourselves up too much that we because maybe in I, I don't know if, if this is what Saul went through, because a lot of things the Bible don't talk about. But. I believe we beat ourselves too much that we start to believe the voices in our head and we confuse the voices in our head with God's voice and we think that's God condemning us, but God doesn't condemn us. He just convicts us. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's just, again, like a lot of us forget these leaders are not perfect. They're not perfect beings and it's crazy, you know. Now, with that being said, could it be that even leadership is just not stable and, and in a lot of places, you know, even with the now, let's take it back to a secular step or where you talk about police brutality. Could it be that even in the police department field, the leadership is just not stable. It's a lot, it's very unstable. And as you can see, history is fully, fully repeating itself over and over again from generation to generation. And to me, I just feel like it, it, it gets to a point like, okay, I think enough is enough. When are we finally going to change this? Because it shouldn't be a crazy rocket science thing to change the judicial system. It should just be changed and that's it. It should just be understood. Absolutely. The fact that you make it political. Um, and what bothers me is there are some things that just should be common sense. It shouldn't be anything politicized or divided. Divided. It should just be so because it's things of the heart. It's things of compassion. It's things of care. Um, it's things of not only empathy, but it's things that just, to me anyway, make logical sense. But they're just certain things that like people fight and divide over. And I'm like, really? Really? And this is why I don't really like getting into politics because it's games. It's just all I see is just these mental games. And it's very it's very taxing, very taxing. And so many people um, jump into it and 
they'll basically lose like themselves in it and lose family members, lose friends, relationships. And it's, it's no, no, so- I hear you. No, it, it, you're spot on. You're spot on, brother. And um, it's so true. It's so true. You know, and I, I know for me personally, it hurts because I never, you know, I wouldn't even wish that on my worst enemy, you know, the craziness mm-hmm. that a lot of, of us are going through. So I wanted to ask you, um, do you want to share another piece with us? Absolutely. Um, politics and there's, well, well, there's definitely a bunch of pieces I've um, written about how I feel about it. Okay. <laughs> um, it's all, all just deciding which one I um, to pick, actually, because there's, there's plenty of them I've I've written about. Oh yeah, disenfranchised. Here's one. I'm so disenfranchised with the system and the lies, existing in a climate where cynicism thrives. Politics is a game show, pitiful drama satirized, inundated with programming that leaves one desensitized. You see, I'm struggling already with my mind feeling cauterized, sick of catering narratives made to traumatize. The media will hypnotize so mindless things we glamorize. Corporate courses to make us soulless corpses is the prize. So through their organization, we're left sick and broken. Sick people and malleable people, aren't you scoping the moments? Yet still some foolish doting, foolishly doting, until we're frozen, like we can't live without the org eroding our brain organ. We've all become donors through social media probing, decoding, loss of tender care and human condolence. (laughs) And some wonder why so many have turned hopeless. Hollywood is a cannibal. Deep state cabal are all locusts. Blind eyes while kids are trafficked and die, yet no one notice. The world is sick, truly devoted to their psychosis. (laughs) And get off to entertain your demonic masters with some good quota. But who cares about what I have to say? You see, I'm just another poet using my art to expose it. Screaming in a padded room, sounding crazy so no one will even notice. (laughs) But maybe I am crazy, spouting foolishness, and they've won. So am I making any sense? Am I making any sense? Am I making any sense? As I start to turn numb. Wow. Wow. Now, what that piece in particular is was there anything in particular that inspired that piece to talk about that topic or it was just something that came to your mind? It was both. Um, okay. It was just I was sick of the just sick of the hypocrisy and sick of just the political banter just going on in in the world that always has gone on in the world you know since the times of Rome since the times of Babylon since the times of Egypt and the time of every other single culture that's pretty much existed and you know it it just it's annoying to me it it really is and I know some people reading, reading that or hearing that like, oh man, oh, this guy just sounds like some big conspiracy theorist. Oh, ha, 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 ha. You know, and it's like, you no, know, a lot of stuff I'm saying, you know, it is happening. You know, um, you know, I'm not one of those, the earth is flat and everything. I'm not definitely, I'm not one of those, I'm not one of those people. Right. Forgive me, forgive me for the people who hear this who are like, but the earth is flat. The earth is. <laughs> okay, well, you yeah. Uh, okay, you can you can believe your opinion. Okay, right. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, right. though, just like, just like two plus two is five, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. well, you you're entitled you're entitled to your opinion, freedom of speech. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. um, my my whole thing is I think it's just uh, I, I'm sick of. I, I don't want to sound redundant, but I, I'm just sick of the whole mind games. I'm sick of the, 
media manipulation. I, I'm, I'm just tired. And I, I know I'm not the only voice who feels that way. And actually, as I was scrolling on my Instagram, there's another poem I want to share. It's called Truth Talk. Okay. So, and it goes right in line with the poem, actually. A lot of people are still sleeping. Matrix dreams, so not peeping. Chess moves being made against elitist demons. These so-called gatekeepers who are living lavish, using lesser magic. What they establish is distraction by factions, cards of wars, making hordes of us with entertaining entrapment. We are progressing backwards, programmed against the populist, poppy-seated reactions. Proper propaganda to keep us property for more monopoly protraction. Damn, I've had it. Time is ticking down, but have you followed the rabbit? <laughs> While we're being spiritually and mentally famished, so many a content of starving, they've stuck on it like a habit. Speech like this, they blacklist. More because I'm black, they will brandish, use words and schemes to whip me so that people abandon. Because people believe celebrities, some are modern day bandits, blue collar crime, money, troll fines, so they regulate our bandwidths. So information is sandwiched, vital history vanished. By hundreds of years, this is greater than the pandemic panic. But are you listening? Do you get the puzzle pieces I'm rhyming, poetic truth, but still can't see the horizon? Inside I'm crying as we're pimped and used as slaves, hurting no one. Some are getting tax breaks off the trafficking sex slaves. Then have the audacity to award it in joyous pageantry. <laughs> they use philanthropy to hide their moral depravity, emotional bankruptcy, blasphemy on all sides, living in a do-as-they-will world where the one eye truly thrives. Wow. I, I like that a lot. Um, again, so, damn. I, I have no words because that was such a phenomenal piece. Like what? What? What inspired that piece? It was just the same thing. Um, it was it's just I see what's going on in the world, and just my perception, um, emotionally, spiritually, about everything, and once again, just 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 being just being tired, um, and. Um, Feeling like I can be a small voice to speak out, you know, and I don't have a lot of money, you know, I'm not some big name person, but, you know, what I write about poetry, um, it's important, it's, it's, it's important to me, and even if I'm the only one who gets to see it, I mean, hopefully more people get to see it or read it. Um, it's like, I feel I've done my emotional, like, output. Right. I've been able to, I've been able to um, just, as you know, when you write a poem, you could be going through something, but it's th it's therapeutic, you know, when you're going through your whole catharsis of everything. And no, and I definitely you, agree with that. I definitely agree with that because it, it is therapeutic. It is funny too because um, I, I've been writing poetry since I was in junior high school. But did I ever think back then that today, like, do we would even have a, such platform as this? No way. Because even back then, like, our minds weren't even designed to even think in that way. Where it's just like, oh my god, like this is insane. Oh my god, like now we get to interact with people because let's be honest it's hard to use social media as a platform to interact with one another like you live in detroit i live in um bayonne new jersey of all places right but same thing with another brother that i talked to his name is um brandon white he lives in arkansas like you know what i'm saying and it's like yeah we're interacting in this thing and at the same like in one aspect it's like damn social media you can't trust it because it's catfish but then there's the other aspect wow there really is a sense of community but it's just hard to come by so either we found it by luck or god just allowed it for us to unite in that way to share each other's pieces and even in that, right, let's be honest, you know, even the community ain't always so innocent, right? Let's be honest, you know, sometimes it's BS in the community too, everywhere you go, whether it's politics and wrestling or, or, or in music, 
you know, but there's always some kind of thing is what we pick and choose to to take with us that's going to help us grow or help us not grow. And that's just life, you know, life, life is, it's a constant learning experience, you know, you, you never, hopefully, like, you never stop, like, learning and all these different um, tapestry of puzzle pieces um, through this journey of life we go through, you know, now all the pieces that you see, just like when you see a puzzle piece, um, you know, not all the pieces you think are going to fit are going to fit, but um, there, are, there are some that will. And, you know, all of us, we're never going to ourselves put all the pieces together. And that's like, you know, humanity is basically, humanity is this living tapestry of puzzle pieces. You know, all of us are just trying to, as we're trying to puzzle together our lives and this journey through life and other people time puzzle together their lives. And of course, you know, in this life, we're never really fully ever going to get the full puzzle. Um, there's just <laughs> there, there, there's too much, and you know. But at the same time, we 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 try our best, and some pieces will fit, and some some won't. But you know, we still try. No, I hear you, and I I feel like even us people are capable of being part of the piece to the puzzle that we need. If that makes sense, that, you know. But I feel like at the same time, it's like we're not called to fit in everywhere, if that makes sense. I feel like we're called to stand out so we can be the piece of the puzzle that the person that also stands out needs to be a part of, if that makes sense, you know? If we're that piece of the puzzle that stands out, then there's something unique about that each piece, you know? Because every piece of a puzzle or every structure of life has its own uniqueness to it. We just have to find what's unique about this piece or this thing or this foundation, if that makes sense. No, absolutely. No, it, it absolutely does. And it's funny because um, the book I'm going to be in, the new book I'm going to be in is called We Hide Our Colors with Ben Gray. Um, and it's by, it's an anthology poetry book by um, this group called Ink Gladiators. And it'll be the third time. Yeah, third time I believe that I published in their work. The first time was capsized, and the poem I submitted with them is called Shattered Vision. And I would actually like to read that. Um, okay. From this darkness will come new light as I swim in serenity, feeling broken, but also reborn, mind becoming awoken, the matrix veil is torn. This web of false reality, I see it for its lies. Through con quantum skies, people scope for, I'm no longer hypnotized. False perception, shattered reflection, in pain, yet alive. <laughs> no more confusion or delusions as that part of me dies. I'm breaking free of entanglement, seeing with spiritual eyes. Energy all around me. New life I am baptized. It may appear that I am fading, but it's only the false identity. Wow. And now my question is, is that the, now that piece was written for the theme of this book? Yes. Yes, it was. So, like, how how did it feel to be a part of something like that? Because you've been in other compilations too, right? You've been you were also in the poetry symphony. Oh, yeah. am I saying that right? I'm sorry, the poets. Am I saying that right? I'm so sorry, Tara. Yeah, no, it, it, yeah, it's called the Poet Symphony. Yes, um, you you are correct. Um, and that was Unchained Melody. I love that poem. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, I was in the Poet Symphony. Um, then I was before I was in Poet Symphony, I was in Poet Speak magazine. Then I was in something else, I think I was in another Poet Speak magazine. Then I, uh, 
See, I've been in some. I've been in like other. Did I was in someone else's work? Like, then, um, I know you've done collaborations as well. Um, one of them being um, which I haven't seen in a long time. Um, there was a piece you wrote, but I, I don't know. It's not. It's not. It's not visible anymore because the person you wrote it with um is not even on Instagram anymore. Um, his name is David. Uh, Mike on. Yes. Yeah, I actually still have that piece. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you, can you, you mind reading that piece? Because I actually enjoyed that. And it's just like, oh, man, like, this guy's not there anymore. Cause I wanted to read it when I was trying to prepare. I said, oh, I wanted to read this piece. And I was looking for it as we were talking. I was like, oh, man, but it's not there anymore. What happened? I didn't realize he's not on there anymore. Oh, he's just taking a break from it. It's crazy. He got sick of Instagram. Him and me actually still keep up um, uh like friendship and relationship off of Instagram. So that's okay. like um he he didn't um he so he didn't like he just really got sick and tired of it. I think are you talking about the one where like um there's the sword fight like it's like um uh, heaven versus hell? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that that was that was such a beautiful. Because I think we've actually done three piece collaboration pieces together, but this one was like I think my favorite. Um. All right, here it goes. Before you enter again into this cycle, you truly know when it's over that you won't like you. This is not a good idea. Oh, please think clear. You can persevere. You're stronger than this magnetic pull that wants to lead you there. Don't listen to him. Listen to sin, a grim outlook that you give into them. Envision a him in your honor, giving you glory. The master's kneeling, lifting your story. Religion is boring, so your mission's ignoring. Turn away, earn today anything you want if you stand stern and stray. No, what you need to do is turn back and pray. Think, is this what you want at the end of the day? I know your heart feels hard and you feel you've gone astray. It's not too late, you're still breathing. That's a sign of God's grace. Worship yourself? That's why Satan fell. Do you want to be in his place? I know that this may feel like it's fun and so alluring. In part, in part of you saying religion is boring and dopamine inside you is soaring. But you're priceless, but you're a priceless gem. Don't debase your soul and start whoring. Affording a place by my side. Priceless and gr priceless and grace is a lie. They say Jesus was defaced, crucified, but the gr grave he was placed inside wasn't a tomb. Those folks um, guzzled those shrooms. Entombed was a joke. Poke fun at it with me. Don't believe in fairy tales. They say God's prov they say God's provoked and will get me. I have horns and a tail and a pitchfork that is with me. Bullshit. I am rich and my lifestyle is surreal. They ask you to fast. I ask you to feel. I ask you to own this life. They ask you to kneel. They ask you to praise him. I'm asking for not. I ask for your soul. They act like robots. Afraid to give up your soul and have eternity in hell. I've been loving this place since the day I fell. It's not fire. It's not brimstone. It's not even that hot. There's no torture and pain. There's no decay and no rot. Listen to the tugs of your spirit. You feel it. The experiences that only you know through the Holy Spirit. The way, the truth, inner life, seeking any other path is the, is the night. If it wasn't right now, why you, why are you in such a big fight inside your rumbling? Because Satan is speaking false hype. What is it to you if you do gain the world and lose your soul? These brief moments of time is all you have until the gates close. I sacrifice myself out of love so through my pain you could be strong and overcome anything this cruel world does. For you, I got beaten down and bloody. Well, for you, I took the whips, cuts, bruises, thorns, and nails. Satan's the master of lies, masquerading a fairy tale. All riches and all existence came through me. In my image, you were made well. He's a liar, saying you won't feel pain in hell. Misery loves his company, deceit he loves to sell. If he's so happy, why has he, his choices given your soul abuse? Fact is, he wants to see you really lose. The master, of, the master of lies, more like master of life. Join forces with me and we plaster your strife. Smooth it out and rid it to your heart's content. God's Ten Commandments are rock hard like cement. I've sent you my words and I've given you hope. 
That's don't struggle with me. That's don't fade into the rope. I'm speaking the truth. I'm not attempting to hype. My reason is you. You're the sole reason I write. My schemes and my rhymes are directed to give you new life. Not life after death, but a life where you currently sit. God promises heaven. You kneel and you sit to worship a self-centered, worship-mongering savior. With me, you can express any kind of behavior. Do what you please. Just make sure you sign over your eternity on that dotted line. To your soul, be honest and don't make no compromise. Check with what the good, good and cons are and truly be on it. I give you free will and that's what love is. Nothing with pompous. I've gifted you the gift to be a modern day psalmist. You need to question your essence in its present for deep reflection. How can someone give life that didn't make the very seconds? Nothing is self-centered to ask for your repentance and to help you be a better you. That's my main incentive. You really want to what thou will, like a flood overspill and have no chill? How you living it up? Mm-hmm. Your inside feel like you killed. See the damage from inside. You feel like you being killed. The world given from the world given the middle finger to my man, the state of sin. So how thou will really manage? I don't want you to sign no dotted line. You're my child, regardless. Before predated time, you were mine. I just want the best for you and see you eternally shine. Not just for this breath of life, but here on after. Be a novel of glory, not an unfinished chapter. You made a mistake. You wretched human, you're weak. There's no reason for me to stay here. No reason to speak to you anymore. So I turn my attention to God. You do good. You omni here and omni abroad. You've taken my chance and you've ruined it again. You've meddled in my affairs of getting humans to sin. This isn't over. No, I will not meet defeat. You say the story is written, but it's my turn to reap. Get off these streets. Stop saying your creation. Sooner than later, you need to take a vacation. This world is supposed to be mine until your son returns. Anger explodes in my rhymes as another failure occurs. I've heard you speak to your beings through a spirit that's holy. Just know in the end, Lord, you won't be able to hold me. I'm folding this time. My hand isn't strong. This isn't over next time. I'll bring my own gong so long. Wow. Whoo! Preach, brother. Preach. Yo, brother, that was phenomenal. That's such an awesome, amazing, amazing piece, man. Wow. Wow, man. And, and I felt it. It's like, it was like, I took it as like the wrestling with God scenario. Like, you're like, Lord, what's going on? But God said, no, my grace is sufficient. Look, I'm here. I'm fighting for you. We love you. I love you. And I know you love me, but you have to keep pressing harder kind of thing. And it's just so, oh, it's such a beautiful piece, my friend. Yeah. And like, you wouldn't even tell, like, we wrote that so fluid that you wouldn't even tell. It was just two different people literally going off each other, like just back and forth. Yeah, it's a powerful thing, my friend. Very powerful thing. So, um, thank you so much for sharing that with me. Um, thank you so much. Because uh, I'm going to bring this to a close, you know, as we're almost like basically towards the end. Um, but, Leon, um, any, any last thoughts? Any last words before we end? Yeah. Um, there's actually more segments I wanted to do. <laughs> so, we definitely have to do <laughs> part two. I want to we say, could definitely we could definitely do a part two. Yeah, why not? Definitely. Um, I want to say for anybody who gets to listen to this podcast, for anyone who gets to hear it, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for taking your time to listen to the two of us, and I hope that in hearing us there was something that you learned that made you increase in your own understanding of whatever topic we spoke about that also brought you encouragement, that also inspired you, and to make you feel that you are not alone in this world with whatever thoughts you may be feeling inside. Um, 
and know that you are loved and know that Jesus loves you. And even though I may not see your face, wherever you may be in the side of the world and whatever time or day it may be, or even in the year beyond this, that um, you are loved and know that Jesus loves you. And um, whatever dreams you have, um, as long as they are positive and that they can bring light and encouragement to people's lives, continue on to that gift because it was given to you in your heart. It was given to you in your mind, regardless of the pitfalls that happen, regardless of the setbacks that happen. Don't give up because you never know whose lives you could touch and who can be inspired and what type of seed you are dropping into the next person's mind to elevate themselves to help elevate others in this journey through life. Amen. Amen, brother. And I, I definitely agree with that. So, um, Leon, thank you so much for joining this. Um, because there's so many things we, I believe we still have to talk about. I don't mind doing a part two soon um we'll talk privately about that how to set that one up uh, brother god bless you thank you so much for sharing your pieces for sharing your thoughts on so many real issues out there um i feel like this is definitely a conversation that we definitely have to continue having you know on a part two definitely see that i don't see why not you know what i'm saying so um we'll talk soon about that um, everyone that's listening, thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for listening and giving this podcast. And I just want to say thank you so much for everyone that's supporting me. That's really, you know, even though it's some slow process and I'm okay with that, it's just, you know, I'm still getting used to this whole podcasting stage of my life. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much, brother. And, um, we're going to just end this episode here. Uh, we're joining for episode five. And yeah, uh, see where it goes. So God bless you, everyone. God bless you, brother. God bless you, too.